<laughs> Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to this week's edition of Learning Space. We are at a slightly different time uh, today so that we could accommodate all our guests in all our time zones. Um, my name is Nicole Gallucci. I am a postdoc with CosmoQuest, uh, and I have with me my co-host, Georgia Bracey, who's right across the hall this time. I know. I can almost hear you in real time as well. <laughs> Echo, George is the yes. first education lead for, for CosmoQuest, uh, and I am joined by our two special guests today. We have Felina Henetegala. I got that close, I think. <laughs> Almost. I'm so, yeah, as a Gallucci, I get it. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, Amelia Ortiz Gill. Well, Hi. <laughs> And uh, they have a project that they wanted to share with us. This is really cool. Um, it's called A Touch of the Universe. So this is a way to bring uh, astronomy to the visually impaired, um, which is, 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 is an amazing concept because we think of it as just this, this visual science, um, this thing we can enjoy with our eyes. Uh, I want to remind all our viewers, first of all, thank you for coming at the, at the, at the new time. Uh, this will be for this week only, unless otherwise noted. Next week, I think we'll be back to our regular time. Okay. Um, if you would like to comment, hang on, I'm trying to bring up the comment stream. If you would like to comment or ask a question uh, of, our, of our guests, you can do so on the YouTube page. We'll see those comments coming in. Um, if you're watching from the event page where the video is embedded, we are looking at those comments as well. Um, anywhere else on Google Plus where this is broadcasting, we should be able to see those comments, but the YouTube and the event page are the best places. Uh, if you are watching somewhere else and want to use Twitter, use the hashtag learning space and we will see those comments as well. Uh, so thank you again for joining us and we'll dive right into it um, with uh, Amelia and Delina. Um, can you tell, give us a brief overview of, of this project here? Um, yes, I, I'll just start, uh, before jumping into the project, I'll just mm -hmm. start uh, with something else. Now, <clears throat> I have been doing uh, astronomy outreach uh, for quite a while, even as a kid, because uh, where I come from in Sri Lanka, we don't have any 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 astronomy in, in, in a professional level, so we, you have to do your own thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was in grade uh, 9, we, did, we, were, we were doing this star party, and, uh, and uh, one of the kids actually was not, uh, he didn't have any disability, but he was in a wheelchair because of an accident. And so he came to the star party with his parents, and we didn't know how, I mean, we had to accommodate for him to adjust the telescope, which was difficult, we are, the, the way he was seated. And uh, then I realized, you know, <coughs> if, if, we, if we had lots of, lots of, lot more people with disabilities, we would have a problem, because uh, we, it, it's just such a difficult uh, thing to accommodate to various types of, uh, you know, how, how they, uh, how they are, I mean, usually, uh, especially, it's the same with the kids, uh, because once you adjust the, especially at the school, once you adjust the telescope, and you need, you need to change and, you know, fix it uh, again to, for each and every person. And then uh, <clears throat> that, that, uh, that one incident I wanted to share, and the other one is, uh, uh, we have a blind school in Sri Lanka, and uh, I was uh, I got involved. I volunteered to teach them cricket. Uh, by the way, for your information, cricket is like a huge thing in Sri Lanka. You get to bump uh, with the it, bat. It, <laughs> yes, that's the part I love the most. But, sorry. And uh, the when so so these kids were uh, asking what I what, uh, what I do and uh, you know what I study. I I was in high school that time. And I said I was in high school, but I want to uh, pursue my uh, career in astronomy. And so they were intrigued by explaining what is astronomy. And then I realized astronomy is a visual thing. How do you explain? Mm. And so I had a, such a hard time trying to convince this is astronomy. This is all science. And they kept asking questions like pushing me, pushing me. And I, I, I realize I don't have, I don't know how to explain because it, 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 I, I, if you just show the images, it's much easier. Yeah. How do you explain a galaxy? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, you can't, these are kids, so you can't go any, any uh, more detail in the physics of science, you know, uh, explain like a star is this, so on. And you need to be like very creative. And then, uh, but 
uh, the, after those two incidents, actually, I got me thinking, you know, there should be, we should do something about, you know, for, to accommodate the, uh, these challenges. And uh, then, uh, 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 then I met Amelia a couple of years back, and then she got involved with the Astronauts Without Borders, uh, mm -hmm. and we started uh, with this project uh, called uh, Astronomy People uh, disabilities, and uh, but I mean, it, it's not in in a non existence. Existence. Uh, there are people. There are quite a lot of people doing very individual efforts. Uh, and uh, what we started in uh, at astronomical borders is to try to get these all, all these people together. Uh, and 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 uh, this project we are we are going to talk about is actually part of that. I mean, it it kind of started. With how we all go together and so on. To introduce the project, I, I want to uh, let Amelia do it. So, Amelia? Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, the idea, the idea is to help teachers in developing countries to, to have some materials for their students with uh, some special needs, right? So, we, we 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 decided at some point to put together a few resources to make to make it easier for them to introduce basic astronomical concepts to their blind students. I mean, I mean all this material is it's not only for blind people. They can they can it can be used the same by people with normal sight. So it's yeah, a, I think it's, it's cool. A, too. <laughs> it's a yeah, it's it's something under the it's. It's uh, made in the frame of the universal design of learning, so uh, to create materials which are accessible to the most people that uh, can use it. So, yeah, we will develop this kit with different astronomical activities and uh, we will then distribute it to uh, developing countries in Africa, Asia and uh, America also. And also the kit is many others to young kids, but it, it can be used by anyone who mm. wants to learn about astronomy or just to touch the moon. Or <laughs> so yes, there, there, inside the kit we have uh, a few a few objects that uh, we can describe, and you can put the the first the first picture I sent to you. You can. We have a yeah. That's a that's a web page. Uh, we have a web page for the uh, for the project, and um, the first uh, the the first element we have in the kit is a, a half a sphere. You can show us the next picture. I think should be yeah. So we have we have gathered a few objects which we have made among the people who are working in the in the project. So um, if you go to the next picture, <laughs> we have the, this half a sphere. It's part of a planetarium show for uh, blind people. So it's a it's a program that we developed for the International Year of Astronomy back in 2009. And uh, it has a, a soundtrack in various languages. It's in, at the moment, it's, it is in Spanish and Portuguese, and we are dubbing it into English also. And uh, it has some uh, special effects related to the objects we are talking about in the program, during the program. And at the same time, the public can touch actually touch the, the constellations that we are talking about in the program. So we make this mixture of sounds and uh, tactile things. And um, yeah, we can show some another picture which is the people in the people in the planetarium at Spino in Portugal. And they were attending one of these this show for blind people. Uh, we still have some projection in the dome because there are people who are not completely blind, so they can mm -hmm. still feel the light coming from 
from the dome and uh, and also the people who go along with uh, with the blind people they can see and uh, it's yeah, nice it looks if like they it can see the <laughs> yeah it looks like it would be enjoyable for a sighted person as well to to sit yes, there and actually have the tactile experience yeah that's yeah. what i was saying to you before it's a show for all it's mm -hmm. uh, we try to make it as wide as possible mm -hmm. right and so then, you have enough of those half spheres, Amelia, for everybody that attends to, they each have their own sphere, yes. it looks like, and, okay. Every, everybody who is blind, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have a limited number. Okay. If you have as many uh, half spheres as people, then you can give one to each other. But if not, uh, we use one for the blind people, maybe, <laughs> have a preference. How do you, um, I should put my face back. How do you make the spheres? Are these 3D printed or are these made by a manufacturer? Yes, these are 3D printed. Oh, cool. So we have a, we have a company which uh, prints uh, the model. And then uh, it seems that it, it, it's, it's a bit expensive to 3D print every single half sphere. So they make uh, the prototype with a 3D printer and then they make a silicon mold, mm -hmm. and from that silicon mold, they make cheaper copies in resin or some kind of plastic, which is hard and light mm. and uh, useful for these things and cheaper. <laughs> but I wonder if somebody, if a school or somebody had access to a 3D printer, could they get the directions or the whatever they need from you and, and print their own? Is yes, sure. Yes, yeah, yeah. We will send them the file, the STL file, to be printed, mm -hmm. and uh, all the directions to to work with it. We also have produced uh, a flat version that people can uh, print oh. in a braille in a braille printer, which are more common than three D uh, sure. printers. <laughs> and uh, we also have a. a um, do it yourself with cheap everyday uh, materials. Uh, so it's a, it's you can do the half sphere by yourself. It it takes a while, but I think it's a it's a nice workshop for children. So uh, in fact, we had this idea of uh, having a workshop for sighted and non sighted children. With sighted children, we'll make the half sphere, and that will be afterwards used by the non sighted children. That's great. So they both, they all collaborate. In the right, because it's so show. beneficial for both groups. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I, I, I'm sorry, just scroll ahead to the next picture. Um, what is? What are the people wearing on their heads in the, uh, is this part uh, of the show as well? It's part of the show, actually. The, the, this is from the premiere of the show mm -hmm. at the Hemispheric in Valencia. The Hemispheric is a planetarium which has uh, it has seven uh, different sound lines. So uh, one of the they have the possibility of sending just the the voice of one of the narrators directly to your headphones. Mm. So uh, the this. Uh, okay, the program has two narrators. One of them is the uh, is explaining the general astronomical topic, mm -hmm. and the other one is giving instructions to use to the users to uh, move through this half a sphere, so they know where to touch at any time during the show. So the the instructions were sent directly to the to the headphones. Okay. So they were not uh, here uh, through the whole planetarium, but only yeah. to the headphones, to the people wearing the headphones. So it's a pretty, yeah. It's, it's Nicole, a, sorry, can you make that picture appear large on, on the main screen? Or? Oh, I, I did. You can't see it because you're I on just a can't hangout. See. Sorry. Oh. You can, you can okay. click on the window. Hang on. If, when I'm screen sharing something. Sorry, or, technical uh, question here. Yeah, that's oh, fine. Right. Um, and I can make the audience see it. Um, but if you want to see it, you have to click on that square individually. So you have more control over, over your own. <laughs> Which makes it really frustrating when I'm in a hangout, I'm not in, you know, watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is what we were talking about with the, head the headset. Yes, now I see. Okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the last day, actually, I got the, I, I was able to touch 
this. I, I would say uh, uh, we were at the European uh, Tantra Science Congress, and mm -hmm. Emily actually brought a couple of these, I, I think. And so uh, it was the first time I managed to touch one, actually. And I remember the remember the time I met these uh, kids at the blind school, and I, I was thinking this is perfect. And uh, mm -hmm. by by that time we, we had already I, I think by that time we had already uh, submitted our proposal to OAD. We were finishing. No, we were, we were, actually we were finishing. <laughs> yeah. And and I was when I touch when I was actually touching that uh, half with I I was thinking myself I I must get involved with this project mm. <laughs> uh, because it just I mean you can. You can explain as much as you want, but when you actually see it, when you actually touch it, then mm -hmm. you realize how important it, this is for people with disabilities, especially like visually impaired. And, and then we don't really, we don't really, uh, we, we don't really see the impact of, uh, I mean, how large is this community? Because uh, currently, according to World Health Organization data, statistics, uh, there are about uh, 285 million people. With some degree of visual impairment, wow. that's a huge number. And about 39 million are blind, and then rest rest have you know some degree of uh, visual impairment. And the thing is, about 90 percent of them are living in developing countries, which is the worst, and uh, because they don't they don't get any facilities to to improve them, improve that. And and then if we look at the other areas like jobs and you know getting getting along, and, and, and I mean their day-to-day -day life, it, it's such a struggle, especially if you're coming from a developing country, and then you have disabilities. And and then uh, then uh, it, it's predicted that this is going to keep on keep increasing mm. because of the population increase. Yeah. And uh, so we need to, I mean, we, we all do outreach whenever possible. And uh, it's it just it, it's could be I mean if everyone can be prepared or have some sort of experience so as in some sort of some kind of resources in handy to you know if some if if you can do some uh, for example if you're doing a star party and if, if uh, some somebody with a disability approach and then uh, you know I have seen because I have seen the people telling the stories uh, I have we, we we didn't have any way of actually promoting, promoting that person because he, he yeah. or she had a disability. And so it, it's such a sad thing if you actually turn them around. And so we need to, it would be nice if we, if those are doing outreach and if they are accommodated with uh, some resources. And that's one of the reasons actually behind the kit. And, uh, and, and we are, <clears throat> uh, can I go to, into distribution area? Um, as you want, but we could, we could go on presenting the items of the kit. Sure, sure, yeah. Whatever you like, and, yeah. Uh, and then yeah, we... Uh, or, or, uh, as you want, I mean, you yeah, can go on and, the solution. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, no, no rules. I'm, bit, <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit too excited because the, the, the distribution go on, go on. goes to developing... Yes. The, uh, the distribution goes to developing countries and and one of my focus, I, I, I mean, not one of my focus, my focus uh, when it comes to astronomy is actually in developing countries. And Amelia will take you through the, uh, the kit uh, later on, but uh, <laughs> we, are, we are going to, uh, the distribution is, the, the whole focus is on developing countries. And so we'll be uh, focusing on countries in Africa, Asia, and uh, even in the uh, uh, like Americas, especially in Latin America, and uh, so, uh, and uh, these groups uh, we are going to reach uh, uh, not. I mean, they are not actually. They ha they haven't been doing any outreach related to people with disabilities, but we are going to get them to because you know, unless we unless somebody start, they are not. I mean, people are not gonna actually try to create themselves. So. Uh, we we know this is I mean this is definitely going to work and because uh, when Amelia explains the the kid you can see how easily you can act, anybody can do it and I I remember one of our friends from Africa who was uh, about two weeks back saying uh, uh, I I told him uh, that he, uh, he's from Tanzania 
and I told him uh, when we have the kit available, you should definitely apply for one. And then he said he replied saying he would love to have one, but he is not actually experienced in dealing with have you know uh, doing programs with uh, uh, people with disabilities. And then uh, we both replied saying you don't have to be, have any experience because it, it's very simple using this kit. And uh, you know we we have included the. Uh, uh, instructions and how to use them and uh, you know that, so that's a good example on why people are a bit reluctant and but with the kit and with the resources we create it's very easy and uh, Amelia if you can explain what's in the kit <laughs> yes I can <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me get the screen share. Yeah. I want one. So, <laughs> <laughs> this one, there is a group of people touching the, the moon. It's a tactile moon we have designed for, mainly for blind people. It's, a, it's not very, it, it doesn't have many details on the surface, so it, it's, a, uh, it's easier to be understood by touch. Because uh, if you let too many details mm -hmm. to touch, it can get confusing. So uh, we have we have only kept the main uh, features of the mm. of the moon in terms of visibility. We wanted to convey the tactile uh, in 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 a tactile way the sensation we have when we look to the moon. So uh, for for example, it's it's not just a topographic representation of the moon. Right. So you can find there uh, uh, the cra uh, ray craters, which the the rays of the craters, which uh, they don't have any relief in reality on the surface of the moon, but uh, uh, you notice them clearly when you look at the moon. So we wanted to to include them on the of the sphere for the blind people to learn, okay, craters have also rays. So, um, wow. And That's the, really cool. How did you decide? Yeah. I mean, how did you decide what features to, I guess, pull forth and, and, and which to, mm -hmm. to ignore? Um, okay, we, for, the, for the near side, mm -hmm. we chose the most famous ones, okay. you know, the Maria and uh, the Copernicus crater, Tycho crater, all these very famous features. And then for the far side, we just use the the largest ones. Okay. In fact, in general, we kept just the general, the, the largest features on the moon are the ones which I get. So we we also we put two caps to the moon in order to uh, mark the North Pole and the South Pole, mm -hmm. and on the North Pole you get uh, a T on relief, so uh, people know where the North is and where the South is. Okay. And uh, then we also put a meridian, which is uh, making the transition from the near side to the far side, so we can also explain that uh, we only see half of it. And the other half we, we cannot see. That's cool. But that actually answers one of the questions. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we just got a question from, uh, okay, T3601SU <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> I'm just T3. Um, can one tell the near side versus the far side? I Just looking at this, I can't tell which one this is, if this is the near side or far side, but it's, it's one of them because that must be the south pole and the meridian going yes, around. Yes, it is. Yeah, um, I think this is Tico Bra Tico's. This is Tico's crater. So it's, oh, right uh, here. It's, uh, it's a near side. Yes. Oh, I see it. It's a near side. Cool. So if you go back to the previous picture. Sure. There in the moon, you can see the the face, which is facing us, is the near. It's the near side, mm -hmm. with the names there. Okay. And you can put the name so people don't get lost on the on a blank moon. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but you, don't have, you don't have the names on there raised up, right, or in Braille or no, yeah, no, right? because Actually, you want to just represent the visual experience of seeing the moon as yes. it's in the sky. That's more the idea. Yeah. Yes. And first, okay, we had a prototype, and uh, yeah, we had a prototype in which. We had also some braille marks on the moon, but they got confused with those. So people just asked us to change them or just to remove them because they, they were confusing. So what one can do is actually with using Vimo, you can put some marks with the demo, braille demo, and pass them glue them to the to the surface of the moon and then you can also remove them when you don't want to use them so in oh. this way they can they can read the marks easier because they are they are on the demo and they are easier to read and uh, you can also change the marks and uh, i want to talk about craters today okay so i will mark just craters and then another one they i want to talk about apollo landing sites. So I will mark only Apollo landing sites. And so it makes the object a more versatile thing to work with. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> that is so, really cool. And it's not just that, you know, it's not a, 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 a true topographic representation. It's a, it's translated into, into a tactile translation. I think mm. yeah that is really yes good. yes that's the main idea we it's yeah. not uh, we we started off with a visual uh, map of the moon mm -hmm. made by Clementine the Clementine Pro by NASA mm -hmm. NASA so uh, we there there are some topographic maps too but uh, we we wanted to to give the tactile impression of the visual thing so not the real <laughs> topographic moon, right, but, right. The, but what we actually see. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's really cool. Um, I wanted to put in also another brief uh, comment also from, from T3 uh, saying that my astronomy club donated several just then released Braille astronomy books to a local library. Um, he said it was, it was so easy, you know, it was easy. One guy in the club heard about the books, bought them, uh, donated them to the library, and the club all chipped in to do it. So helping out uh, is something as easy as that, just deciding to, to go ahead and, and order something like this and, and donate it. Yeah. 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 Uh, and the, most of the things in the kit actually are free. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they're online. And as Amelia said uh, earlier, the, the, the you can if you have if you have access to a three D printer then you can ask for the file from us yeah. and you know get it created yourself and mm -hmm. I think about ninety or ninety five percent of the materials are free. There might be one or two like books or something that you might have to buy yourself, but all, almost all the materials in the kit are free. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, we have been getting lots of uh, inquiries about whether people can actually buy, I mean people in the sense that uh, those who are from developed countries asking whether they can buy the kit so they can actually, uh, you know, uh, do programs too. And we might, we might uh, be able to uh, have the kits available for others in, a, in, a, in the sense uh, that if they buy one and then we can donate another to sure. a developing country. But it, this this might come after the first uh, round of the decades. That's some, that that's similar great. to what Galileo Scope did, I think. They eat yes. buy one yeah. and donate one to a classroom. Don't yeah. Cool. Um, so there's more there's more in this kit, and the next thing is Galaxy. So I'm excited. You want to talk <laughs> about that? <laughs> the next thing are the Fetu Braille sheets which have been donated by the Chandra Center. They're very nice material, actually, that they, they've done, combining very nice images, and uh, which they have, uh, they have translated into, tactile, into a tactile images. They have the tactile key to explain the different features on the, on the image. So you can put your hand over 
over this over this image once it's printed and you can feel where the center of the galaxy is you can feel where the arms are you can feel uh, where the x-ray gas is that is that is so cool so they're doing multi wavelength <laughs> they're right. doing it in, in a tactile way yeah so Chandra has uh, given us this for for the kids so we are very grateful to them for this <laughs> Because it's it's really very nice material. Yeah. Is this something that's more difficult to print? They they've already printed them up for you. Um, yes, they already printed it for okay. us. So gotcha. I don't know whether they are available actually for download on, on their website. But you can just go uh -huh. to that web web address and have a look or ask. Them. Yeah, you so you can uh, request them. What's that? You can request them. Okay, you can request them. Yeah, because it looks like it'd be a more difficult thing to print because it's not straight, yeah. well, right? It's yeah. <laughs> funky shapes. That is fantastic. So, yeah, I'm like putting my hand against the screen trying to touch it, and it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, this, there's another one here. This is uh, Eta Carine, our favorite star that should go supernova. Yeah, at some point. We are waiting for it. <laughs> 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 We're still waiting, waiting. <laughs> Wow. So there will be also a book of activities to be carried out with the planetarium hypersphere and also the tactile free moon. We are yeah, on the kit. We are also including including a CD with the soundtrack for the planetarium show, so they can actually reproduce the planetarium, the whole planetarium show, if they want to, or they can use the hypersphere to make another to make other activities. And in this book of activities, we are giving some suggestions on how to use the, the hypersphere. But uh, of course, I'm sure that uh, the, the teachers will come up with new and wonderful ways to use uh, <laughs> these objects once they get them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, finally, we, we are planning to include also a book on tactile astronomy by Noreen Greece. You know, she has all these wonderful books on astronomy in Braille for blind people and uh, we would like to include at least one of those in each one of the kids with the, only the kids. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all all the, if you put all the materials uh, together it will be like a you know box in a box or something that which you can carry around, right? You can put it in your back of the car and then go around and stop somewhere. Spot if you spot somebody mm -hmm. and stop and you know, Let's learn astronomy. <laughs> you look like you want to learn astronomy. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I do it all the time. <laughs> so how can someone get one of these kits again? I... It's uh, so off, uh, probably in about uh, maybe about a, uh, in about two months or so, we'll mm -hmm. be putting out a call mm -hmm. uh, as in uh, through our partner. I mean, the kit is... Uh, and there are lots of partners involved in yeah. with the kit, uh, and uh, these, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the distribution is uh, goes out to countries uh, in in the uh, developing world. And but uh, we'll be using uh, networks of uh, four of our partners: uh, the Astronomical Borders and uh, Universe Awareness, and then the Galileo Teacher Training Program, and mm -hmm. then the Galileo Mobile. Uh, Galileo Mobile will get two kits uh, because those guys are actually going places. And uh, <clears throat> then, so through these networks, we'll look for groups uh, which we know who can make a difference and, and get the best out of best use use out of this kit. And uh, in the first round and in this uh, as first step, we are creating thirty uh, kits. So 30 kits will be uh, distributed among the, these networks. I mean, the, the groups involved in, in those networks. And we might <coughs> probably ask them to, like, let's say, for example, like five goes to AWP uh, groups and five goes to University of Venice groups or something. And uh, maybe they'll tell us uh, these are the groups deserving that they should probably get them. Because I mean, we, we, 30 kids is a, such a small number, and we don't have uh, means of you know putting out a call to do that lives. Mm -hmm. and so they'll probably let us, uh, you know, we'll probably let them decide 
who are the groups because they have been these uh, we want they have been <clears throat> there are so many groups in, involved with these poker partners for such a long time so they they know inside now out of these groups and uh, so we'll probably do that in about two months after after the production period and uh, we do have more partners involved uh, Amelia yeah oh okay yes the, the <laughs> The project is partially funded by the International Astronomical Union's Office for Astronomy of Astronomy for Development. So uh, those are the main partners. And uh, other partners are okay, my institution, the Astronomical Observatory of the University of Valencia, NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory, which is uh, providing us with this uh, beautiful FETU braille sheets and also the Astronomical Observatory of Padova in Italy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we so are... The, uh, yeah, go ahead, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, uh, the IAU, the uh, Office of Astronomy for Development, is actually... Uh, uh, the project is partially funded by them. And... Uh, they, they, uh, we, we are hoping that we could actually, with, with those funding, we hope that we can actually uh, complete the production. But uh, to get to get the re re rest of the resources together and, and then the uh, to distribution, uh, uh, which means the other part of the funding, uh, we are raising donations. And uh, because <clears throat> to finish the pro project, actually, we need like another uh, half, five thousand, about five thousand yeah. euros. Yeah. And uh, so we are currently we are we are keeping an open kind of. There's no deadline. Mm -hmm. We are keeping open donation call, and uh, we hope like people will support. And because it it's not like uh, this is a, this is a very unique opportunity for all of us. I mean. I haven't got involved with uh, a project like this uh, for. A, I mean, this is my first time, and and I'm uh, trust me, I'm a sucker for good projects. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, you can see how you know how you can change people's lives, and how you can you know to give the universe to somebody who has never seen it. And. Uh, because I have personally experienced that how difficult it is to show uh, somebody, somebody, someone with a visual impaired, you know how difficult to show something so visually, and and you know we need more. I mean we need more things like this happening in the world, and we need more people to get into this field, create resources, and, and doing start doing sessions, programs, include in their sessions, you know, and uh, <clears throat> have have some kind of you know. Uh, methods or, or strategies in their already running programs to way to accommodate all these uh, people with disabilities, and so this is kind of like our very tiny contribution to that field. And if we hope people will support it because we need actually the financial support a lot. And uh, so hopefully with the with everyone's support we can continue and uh, carry on. And so you guys all just, heard that. Just, this is one way you can help is to donate your Yes. <laughs> they'll change your dollars yeah. into euros for I'm sure, so <laughs> <laughs> we need more money, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but it's yeah. good. I mean just just uh, sacrifice your Starbucks coffee and then donate that money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need that latte. <laughs> Good old office coffee. Mm. <laughs> That's awesome. That's, uh, I've also added the links to um, the IAU um, Astronomy Development Office is astrofordev.org. Yep. Uh, right. And I saw they just, you, you had shared on Google Plus, they just put out a newsletter with this very nice graphic of, of the different ways that astronomy actually benefits society which makes mm -hmm. me so happy. Um, and the Galileo Teacher Training Program, which I think is having a big meeting coming up in July or August? July. In July. Oh, July and August, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, galileoteachers.org, and so there's a lot of teacher resources there, um, a lot of programs that can be done. I know some are with the Galileo Scope, 
um, but then it also includes this project as well. Um, let me see. I lost what window I had open. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have a comment from Michael Jobin saying that uh, some Ben had a five-foot tactile moon at Convergence. Wow. They had a large. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> it's yeah. a, Convergence is a is a uh, sci-fi convention held in Minneapolis every summer, which I'm going to in July. Uh, yeah. So I will have to check that out. Um, and then uh, T3 also uh, talked about uh, the the um, his club member. Uh, this club had a blind member, one of the original club founders. Uh, he was very fond of astronomy podcasts, which is another way of, of, of sharing astronomy. Um, and he said he'd stay up after midnight to hear Stardate uh, on the radio every night. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so do you have anything else, any other interesting bits of the project that you want to describe or, or talk about? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go for it. Something really interesting. Important. Yes. You can donate from our website. Yes. Uh, using PayPal, or <clears throat> you can actually donate through a bank as well. All the information on the website. If you look there, there's a huge banner kind. Of yeah. yeah, it's it's you can't miss it. It's the largest banner in the website. <laughs> <laughs> donate. Is this, is, this a is this a screenshot here? It says we need. Yeah. <laughs> I found the five hundred euro. Yes. Yeah. PayPal does do the conversion for you guys. You can do yeah. this. You can handle it. <laughs> I have like 20 euros sitting at home in a jar, but that's not going to be much help to you guys. You can use PayPal. <laughs> awesome. So do you guys have any plans for other um, things in the universe that you might convert to this um, tactile version? So we've got the moon, right, and then galaxies. and. Someone, I am trying to look at comments this time, it's usually beyond me, but someone mentions maybe doing a comet, mm. um, but I just wonder, do you guys have any, you know, for the future, um, already thinking um, more, what could well, you do? I know some people have done already asteroids mm -hmm. uh, in 3D, cool. and uh, we have just finished uh, a tactile Mars also. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah, mm. But it's, it's still warm in the oven, so. You can have little grovers <laughs> on it. Not quite oh ready gosh. yet, but <laughs> <laughs> very cool. So, yeah. I've, seen a, I've seen a 3D printed version of Vesta, asteroid Vesta, but that was ah. topographically correct. That wasn't the tactile yes. version. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that would right. be really, since, since now that we've mapped that so thoroughly, that, that would be a good target to hit as well. You can get those concentric rings around the center. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because that's such a bizarre little word. Although I'm, I'm not sure how it might get a bit tough to be understood just right. by touch. I mean, if you are looking to what you are touching, it's easier. Mm -hmm. But if you have too much detail, it can yes. be a bit tricky. Right. So, but uh, okay, once I guess that once you start to learn how uh, how the feel of a uh, crater and uh, the different shapes and different features you can find on the surface, then. Uh, it's it's just a matter of getting trained to to recognize more complex features. So. Yeah, yeah. What about pulsars? Because I I know a lot of <laughs> pulsars have wouldn't that be cool? Cause they, they they have um you can convert the um you can convert it into sound and actually hear what it would be like if you could hear yeah. a pulsar mm -hmm. going around. There might be a tactile pulsar to go along with with those recordings. Well, that shouldn't be difficult to do, right? Yeah. Just a sphere and then the, the rest, <laughs> the beams, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, but it has to be really heavy material, right? It has to be really dense material. Oh, yes. Neutron <laughs> star. All right, we can do this. <laughs> yeah. Quick to the machine some, shop. <laughs> some lead or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's pretty amazing what you can do with 3D printing. Mm -hmm. I mean, because the 3D printing has opened up this whole new world, mm -hmm. and uh, the problem is that the material you use for printing is pretty expensive. And but uh, you know, if, if people have access to 3D printer, I guess we can provide things because mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not just us who are creating this. And because, as I said before, there are a couple of other people around who are doing their own thing, and. Uh, 
<clears throat> apart from this project, we are trying to get everyone together in a you know same platform. So we don't uh, kind of like uh, repeat things. So, sure. Know, yeah. Uh, do yeah. the same thing, and uh, it would be much more efficient. Mm -hmm. that. Yes. For example, there are people in Argentina which are doing lots of things, and people at Jerkis too. Mm. which are doing lots of beautiful materials, tactile mm -hmm. materials for the blind. And then if you go to 3D modeling, there is this Google SketchUp website where the, they've got, a, Google has got a, a 3D software, um, which is called SketchUp, and they have a warehouse where they put lots and lots of models, 3D models that are ready to print, and they've got lots of uh, NASA staff in there, so lots of uh, mission, of mission uh, probes and uh, mainly mission probes. I think you can find there for some rockets too, so you can reproduce those also. Just what about us? Really to print. So. Yeah, A scale model solar system to be another one. That's another one that's. <laughs> right? You've got, you know, like sun. You need a very large <laughs> You need a very large sun to be able to have a decent mercury. <laughs> right. To get the distance right, you would need it a, a large thing, but that that you know, at least just getting the, the scale. Yes. That, that's something mm -hmm. that you could you could communicate mm -hmm. through that as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. awesome. So if you get your kits out there and people start to um, create their own activities, like Amelia, you mentioned, you know, teachers will start to do that eventually. Do you have a place, or will you be collecting all of them, and sort of a place where people can exchange ideas about what they're doing with these kits and maybe offer new ideas? So sort of a network, a forum even, Selena, like you were, we were talking a little bit earlier. Yeah. About we will uh, probably uh, have like uh, definitely all the groups who are using the kit will send us reports. Mm -hmm. And uh, since this is very new, I mean new in the sense, uh, uh, Amelia and few other people have been testing uh, these uh, in Portugal and Spain, mm. and <coughs> and somewhere else too in South America. I can't remember. Well, the, the, so, yeah, the moon has gone all over the world from Argentina, yeah, the moon, to even India. India. Yes. Yeah, and uh, so e even the even though the the, the tactile moon is there, uh, there are no lots of activities based on that, mm. and because it's very new, I mean, you, you sure. actually look into it, it's very new, and we have a set of activities, but I'm I'm sure uh, you know when people are using, they will come up with their own ways, and and especially uh, when you are when you are using it in you know, developing, I mean, when you let's say when you are using it in India and if they're using it in some in Chile or Argentina, uh, they might use two different you know methods to reach their audience, and uh, because it, it, it's very different where you come from, and you can't do the same activity, mm -hmm. and you have to localize it. Yes. And uh, so we'll we'll probably uh, after we send or just uh, distribute all these thirty kits, and we'll probably have like more activities. On, on the website, mm -hmm. and we'll definitely share all the experience on the website. And so, website will our website will be the kind of like the key, like mm -hmm. sure. yeah. place people can go to and check out things. And we'll probably keep feeding everyone. You know, this is, this is what's happening, and and I, I'm sure there'll be you know things we can improve if we are going for a second round in the future. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, once you uh, let this go in the wild, people will yeah. come up with ideas that you never would have dreamed of. <clears throat> Yeah, that's right. Because everybody's got a slightly different uh, situation, and and then yeah, also just I don't know, teachers and people who do this, they just they're so creative, and they can't leave you know anything alone. They have to tweak it yeah. here and there, and come up with some great new yeah. ways to use it. So that's you know that sort of network or repository of ideas, and will be really important for people. Yeah. So that's great. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. I will. I will beg and plead you all to watching to check out astrokit.uv.es that's the the home website for this project uh, touch of the universe and yes there's a big donate banner right up top uh, so if you can give a little bit then, then please do check out all their partners um, mm -hmm. do you guys have any last message or concluding message last words you want to leave before we close up the show mm -hmm. Amelia well 
and I think this is a this is a very nice project, and uh, we are offering everybody the opportunity to become part of it and collaborate. So I would just tell them, go ahead, make a donation, even if it's small, it, it will help anyway, and uh, and be part of this uh, of this amazing project. I think it's a very nice project. So. <laughs> That will be my last word. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I just want to say that you know, uh, yeah. I mean, anyway, as Emily said, just do support the uh, project. But uh, when when you do outreach uh, again, just think about the people with disabilities. So take that extra step, you know, to support them too. So they can enjoy the universe in the same way. We are. You're you're making me rethink my our local star party here because you have to trudge through the mud, you know, to get to get to it. It's oh, not okay. not accessible even for able-bodied people. Oh. Um, so yeah, that <laughs> that is definitely something to consider. So, thank you so much. This is an awesome project, and I want to get one of these to play with myself, but I don't have a 3D printer, so I'll wait. Um, <laughs> I can live through Pamela when she's at the Galileo teacher training workshop, so she can tell me all about it. Um, so astrokit.uv.es is the website. Uh, everyone, should please go check that out. Um, this, uh, what's today? Today's Wednesday. Tomorrow, tomorrow's hangout is the Planetary Society, so they will be running at, at noon Pacific. Um, and then Friday is the weekly space hangout. So join us at noon Pacific on Friday. We'll be wrapping up all the space stories from the week. And then we do our virtual star party where we bring the night sky uh, to those of you with cloudy skies or light pollution. So you can, you can watch, uh, <laughs> see all these wonderful things through telescopes right from the comfort of your, your home computer. Um, that's on Sunday night. Uh, oh, the, the time oh, is... Oh, while, while having breakfast at my home. Yeah, right. You're having breakfast. <laughs> we're doing that. I know. We need to get some. We need to get some astronomers around the world here. Get some. Uh, I want to see some southern hemisphere stuff. We need to. We need to get some southern hemisphere. That would be stuff. awesome. Astronomers yes. involved in that. Um, but thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, and thank you I will. Very much. Great yeah. project. Thanks for joining yeah, thanks, us. Guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.